Hi everybody. I wanted to give you a little preview about what your students are going to be endeavoring on over the next week or so in math class. So Jake Nunes and I are super excited about this project that we are presenting to the students. And this is the first time that we are rolling out this data visualization project in our data and statistics unit. We are really interested in uh, the art of data vis visualization. And yesterday we uh, introduced this project and uh, the whole idea came about um, in a mini project that Jake and Heather did over the summer. And uh, we thought it would be a really fun way for the students to kind of get their um, get their minds um, really enraptured in statistics and data analysis. So the premise of this project is really built upon uh, a book that was um, written by Georgia Lupi and Stephanie Posevic. And the book is called Dear Data. So I'm just gonna walk you through the project and I really encourage you to sit with your students and talk to them about it. They should be uh, ankle deep in the project at this point, but by next week, they should have some really cool projects to show you. So the original project that was the impetus for what your students are going to do uh, is a really, really fascinating idea. So these two information designers um, set out some years ago on a year-long postcard writing adventure. And what they did was they collected some data and everything was done by hand. They sent all of their information to one another. Uh, Georgia Lupi was based in Brooklyn. Stephanie Posevec was based uh, in the UK. And they answered the same question week by week over the course of 52 weeks. And they recorded all of their data in a visual way. But what made this project really interesting for them, and we hope what will make the project interesting for our students is that the connection that they found um, over the course of time was a really um, profound one that they felt as though rather than becoming more efficient over time, that they were able to connect with their subjects on a much more human level. And that as they really delve into their uh, research, it was something that was much more meaningful to them. So they were answering questions like, uh, you know, how many complaints were they recording over the week? How many times were they answering their phones? Uh, what type of questions were people asking? How many times were they tweeting? Uh, what were people complaining about? Um, how many um, how many phone calls were they receiving that uh, were people complaining about their significant others, et cetera? So human interest type questions, complaints, concerns. So we discussed this and we discussed um, the difference between topics that are interesting to us and topics that really are not interesting to us. So these are some examples of the way that these two women were tracking uh, their research. And this is an example of uh, one of their weeks of uh, their data. And this is an example of their moments of indecision. So you can see at the top, um, this is the visual representation. And at the bottom, this is um, the backside of their postcard, each postcard, and how the legend represents the front of the postcard. So the top, you have Georgia and Stephanie's visual representation of data. And on the back is the key or legend. So it's a real succinct way to show what uh, they are tracking and what uh, the tracking is representative of. So what we decided to do was provide them some different examples of other uh, research projects. 
in the same vein. So on the left-hand side, you have someone who did a very similar project who was tracking the number of tweets um, over the course of six months. Each tree is representing the number of months. Uh, the bird represents the number of tweets, uh, 10 tweets per bird. And the roots are representative of the number of impressions, 1,000 impressions per root. On the right-hand side, it's the same student. And the student decided to represent um, the music that he listened to over the course of a day. Each musical note is representative of a different type of musical genre, from alternative to blues and rock and dance, etc. This um, next set of examples are representing um, students at the Sidwell Friends School down in Washington, D.C. And uh, we wanted our students to see some other middle school examples of the same type of project. And uh, these are students who were looking at how many times they were receiving texts over the course of a day. And I think some of our students are going to be recording the same uh, type of information. So um, these students are recording the number of texts that they receive in the course of the day, who is texting them, and um, what uh, what time the text is coming in. Some of them are also recording what the text is about. So is it a complaint? Is it just a hello? Is it a question, etc. These, um, this is kind of a neat one. This is the type of door that is open in this uh, student's, um, over the course of the day in the student's life. Um, is the door opening in? Is it opening out? Is it a closet door? Is it a car door? And um, they are also recording each shape and um, how long, um, uh, I should say that the time you, you see on the left there, each color is representative of um, the time. So it's pretty interesting how, how specific you can get with your key and your legend. Um, on the right-hand side, each shape is representative of 20 minutes time. This student is recording the questions that they ask, um, whether they're asking about the time, somebody's opinion on something, um, something that they don't understand, or other questions. Whether they're asking a friend, someone else, a family member, a teacher. This student decided to record how many times they're looking at the clock over the course of a day. Um, and when they are looking at a clock, is that clock on a watch? Is it in a classroom, etc.? So interesting to note, symbolically, there are so many different ways to represent the data. And we're encouraging the students to do so in a really um, you know, expressive way. So there's no one way to do this. So we're encouraging them to really think outside of the box here and to get creative with their expression. Just a few more examples here. The students representing um, a week of writing, what they were writing about, were they doodling, uh, you know, what the impression was upon them. They did like it, they didn't like it, et cetera. Another student's um, showing weekend activities. So the project for your students, they're gathering, analyzing, and visually representing their data. Again, as I said, we're encouraging them to show their data in different ways um, through symbols, lines, colors. Most importantly, on one side of their quote postcard, they will not be allowed to use any numbers or any text. Our hope is that they're going to be selecting a topic that is of interest to them. They also should be selecting a topic that is easily 
transferable uh, in terms of data in something that they can actually follow and record. So as I mentioned to them yesterday, they should not be thinking or trying to record uh, data that they cannot um, acquire. So they cannot observe, uh, technically, they cannot observe how many times people are buying tacos on the street in San Francisco, right? Um, there are some students who are measuring how many times a day their dog is barking. So that's perfectly okay to do that. You know, they might have to measure between the hours of, say, 4 p.m. and 10 p.m. or over the course of the weekend or, um, you know, what their neighbor's horse is eating for food or how many times their parents are entering their bedroom, et cetera. Um, but they want to be able to measure and record the data. Um, they want to be thorough with the data collection. They should be keeping notes about it. And they want their data to tell a story. They want to be able to uh, retell the information that they are collecting. When they present the data on the front of the postcard, as I said, there's going to be no um, lettering, no numbering on the front. It's purely a creative process on the front. It's a visual representation. So any way they choose to represent that um, is a creative expression. So they can experiment here, uh, and that is the goal. On the back of the postcard, this is where they will provide a key and a legend, and this is where they will tell the reader exactly what the reader is looking at on the front of the postcard. So this is the about the data part. So what is it that the reader is looking at? And does the student need to provide any additional notes and information so we can understand exactly what it is we are looking at. These are some additional um, examples. Week of complaints. It's another one. And then finally, uh, Jake and I feel it's really important for the students to reflect on the work that they've done because any work that doesn't have time built in for reflection is, is, you know, work not worth doing, right? So we want them to really analyze um, the work that they've done and have them think about the process. So that said, um, why did they choose the topic that they did? Was it difficult for them to come up with an idea? And I think the most important part of this uh, conclusion is number three. Researchers have said um, that it's really um, striking for us to think about the way our brains are working and that in particular, the human cognitive system, the way our brains work is optimized to analyze data that's presented in, in picture format, right? So we want the students to think about that statement. Is that something that they agree with? And this is where I would encourage you to really have a conversation with your children. Is the process of this project one that they felt um, connected to? And this is where your children as learners um, really starts to come to, you know, really begins to highlight themselves um, throughout their academic journey. So um, dig into it a little bit and have fun and um, talk to them about the process. And we want them to think about their victories and challenges um, throughout the course of this assignment. So reach out to us. Um, let us know if you have any questions, but really uh, the eye, your their eye should be, um, you know, not so much at the um at the end here on Monday, but we want them to be thinking about the day-to-day -day here and collecting the data. And um, we're really excited about the project and looking forward to um, what they come up with.